Are you trying to establish your brand as a thought leader? Start a podcast, invite industry experts to be guests on your show, and watch your brand become the prime resource for decision makers in your industry. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to the B2B Growth Show, a podcast dedicated to helping B2B executives achieve explosive growth. Whether you're looking for techniques and strategies or tools and resources, you've come to the right place. I'm Jonathan Green. And I'm James Carberry. Let's get it into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. We are here today with Mike Tabor. He is the founder of Moon River Software, and he's the co-host of the insanely popular podcast, Startups for the Rest of Us. Uh, Mike, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, James. How are you? I am fantastic. So, Mike, I'm really excited to chat with you today. We've been talking uh, offline a bit about automation throughout the buyer's journey and uh, different ways that you can automate one-to-one emails uh, to get to get better results. Results. But before before we get into some specific use cases for how our listeners can can take advantage of the ways that you can do automation, I want them to understand why you're the guy to be talking about this. So could you explain to us what is Moon River Software and what are you and your team doing over there? Yeah, so uh, Moon River Software, I use that as kind of the umbrella company. I've run it since 2005, and I, I kind of do a lot of different things under there under that umbrella, one of which is uh, MicroConf, which is a conference that we run in Vegas and in Europe uh, three times a year year to help people who are bootstrapped entrepreneurs build their software companies. Um, another one is Founder Cafe, which is our online community for that. And then I also have my book, The Single Founder Handbook, under it. But the real uh, thrust of your question, I guess, is, um, you know, what's my background in this area? And uh, to that point, I built this I built this product called BlueTick, which is designed around one-to-one email follow-up automation. So if you send, you need somebody to do something, whether it's reply to an email or to fill out a survey, uh, this software, you plug that person's email address into it. You build its email templates, send them out, and it will follow up with them until they do that. Mm. So if it's just you need a reply from them and you need an answer of some kind, that's one thing. But if you need them to fill out a survey, that's another thing. Yep. But there's all these different mini goals that you'll have that you plug into your uh, sales funnel, and they may be sales-related. They may be marketing-related. They may even be post-onboarding related after the person has become a customer. Um, so I've worked with a lot of companies to help them develop the email templates around these and essentially get the responses from their customers and their prospects that they really need. And there's just a lot of different ways that this stuff is applicable. Um, And I think that sharing some of the information around that is extremely helpful, whether you're using a tool like BlueTick or you're using anything else. I mean, uh, you know, the thing I advocate people start with is literally a spreadsheet and, you know, the couple of pages of like Google Docs or something like that where they have those email templates. So they can just get a feel for what that process looks like and how they plug it into their sales funnel. Yeah. And, and it's important to the, I want listeners to understand that this is not this is not a series of emails that you're sending from you know Infusionsoft or Drip or your marketing automation platform. Uh, the, the you know using tools like BlueTick allow you to actually the, these are coming out of your inbox. So it's coming, you know, you'll see it in your sent folder basically. And so I've, I've been doing this for a while now and it's been incredibly effective for me. And so, so Mike, I'd love to dive into some of these specific use cases that, uh, where you've been working with companies on specific ways to, to leverage blue tick to, to do some of these different sequences. The first one that I want to talk about is, is testimonials. Uh, can you talk to us about, about how you've seen some of your clients, uh, you know, getting testimonials? by by doing these kind of automation sequences? Sure. And I think it's kind of important to kind of tack onto what you had uh, briefly alluded to, which was the fact that these emails are coming directly from a real person as opposed to from what is obviously a newsletter account. And a lot of people will say newsletter at mydomain.com yep. or they'll say, hello, you know, hello or support or something along those lines. And that's fine in general for uh, like the bulk marketing emails that you send out. But in order to get an actual response from somebody, they should be coming from a real person. And you can make it look like that in your uh, email service provider software, but it does, they generally don't have the same feel because they have the unsubscribe links and it doesn't, you know, it's, it's, it's templated and it doesn't look like it came from a real person. Whereas if I send you an email and it literally says I'm on the reply to it, 
um, you know, and you can see that the header information, it literally came from me, you're much more likely to respond to it. Yep, exactly. So with that said, going over to the to gathering testimonials, let's say somebody becomes a customer and two or three weeks down the road, you want to follow up with them and you know they've kind of converted over into a paying customer. You probably don't want to do this with a trial customer, but once they become a paying customer, clearly they've made the decision that they are happy enough to start paying for your product. And at that point, you can go to them and say, hey, you know, I'd really like to talk to you about uh, a testimonial and find out more information about how you're using my product, what made you happy, what you decided to use it for, um, and go back and ask them what they switched from. You know, why is it they switched from some competitor's product or why they made the decision to you start using your product from using nothing in the past. And by going to them in that time frame, it's right after they've made the decision. They've always already got these positive endorphins flowing around that says, hey, I'm happy. I, I just made this great decision. And that's the best time to go ask them for a testimonial. Yep. No, I love it. And, and I feel like kind of related to that, um, may, maybe a little bit down the road after they've been a customer for maybe a little bit longer, you could do a similar thing with case studies as well, like setting up an interview to, to talk to them about specific ways that they've won with your product and then taking that audio interview and, and then being able to slice and dice that into a, a really good case study. So it could be a similar use case for a couple different ways to uh, really add the proof of, you know, showing prospective buyers that, Hey, like people are are getting tons of value from this and, and you, you want it to basically. Yeah. And that also gives you the ability to uh, repurpose that content. So you actually get two things out of doing those interviews and those case studies. One is you get content that you can then publish and promote through your different marketing channels. But the other thing is that it gives you concrete information from somebody who just recently signed up about why it is that they signed up. And you can use that information to say, hey, this person came over. They heard it on this podcast. Let's go take a look at that podcast and find out more about it and hear more about their listenership and learn more about those people and maybe we can get in front of more of those people and make them customers. I love it. I love it. So this, uh, so testimonials, you know, and case studies being one way that, that you can leverage this type of kind of one-to-one email automation. Another, uh, another use case for this is, is influencer outreach. Can you talk to us a bit about that, Mike? Yeah, I think in terms of influencer outreach, there's a, a few different types of influencer outreach that you probably want to examine. One of them is kind of pumping up your existing content um, marketing. So if you have a blog or a newsletter that you're regularly publishing articles out to, um, and they generally tend to be publicly available, but you want to be able to drive traffic to it. And your own newsletters are going to be helpful in doing that, but those those people are kind of already prospects. You want to cast a little bit more of a, a wider net. And the reality is that there is almost always somebody out there who's got a bigger mailing list than you. And there are certain people in different fields where they're considered influencers. And it doesn't matter which industry you look at. There's always going to be influencers in that industry. So if you're doing a influencer outreach to those people, you can say, Hey, we just, you know, I want to introduce myself and you establish that relationship with them so that you have, you can have a conversation with them. You can send them an email and they're more likely to look at it because you've established that relationship. And once you get to that point, then you can turn around and uh, leverage that to some extent to ask them questions or say, Hey, you know, can you, uh, is this relevant to your audience? Can we talk about it? Is there a way that we can promote this particular content that we've developed to your audience and, and help educate them or let them know about it? And provide value to them. And most people are very responsive to that kind of thing. The other place where this is really helpful is if you're going to do a podcast tour, for example. And if you have established that relationship with the podcasters to be able to just kind of shoot them an email and have them open it and talk to them, you can do the same thing in terms of a podcast tour. If you have a new feature coming out or a new take on a particular way for your customers to benefit, whether it's, um, you know, they're marketers and they're trying to acquire customers, it's a new um, email technique, things like that, and you've incorporated them into your product, you can go out and do a podcast tour based around that particular concept or that idea or technique and 
you know, you, you go out to those different people one after another and you can just do a, a, a full blown podcast tour in like a month or two and it spreads very, very quickly. And once you get a couple, you can use that to snowball and say, Hey, we were on this show or we were on that show and you can kind of move yourself up the ladder to, to podcasts that have larger and larger audiences as well. Yep. And, and I think uh, another thing to note uh, as, as someone, you know, Mike, I, I send a ton of cold email. And so I'm leveraging kind of this, these, these same, you know, a lot of these use cases I've done myself and, and being, you know, on the end of someone that gets a lot of pitches for people to, to be on our show. There's one particular thing that annoys me is someone presuming that I want them to be a guest. And so there's one guy that's, he's emailed me like 17 times. And at the end of every email, he, ends it with, so when can we get this scheduled? And I get kind of the, the, the mindset of like, you know, the, the presumptive close and, and like getting me to take that next step. But for whatever reason, for me personally, that just rubs me the wrong way. Like you're, you're assuming that I want you on the show and I've, I have not asked you to be on the show. And so my suggestion for folks specifically setting up their podcast is like you said, talking about a very specific thing that, that you would like to add value to to our audience showing that you you know who our audience is and being able to provide very specific value in that way and then having that clear call to action at the end of the email that says you know is this something you'd be up for doing or do you think this would be a fit for your audience but making it easy for the person on the other end of the email to respond i think that's a place where folks that are particularly marketers listening to this that are more accustomed to sending the newsletter style emails uh when you shift to this type of email you're writing it with the intent of actually getting a response so making it easy for someone to respond to is is i think very important as you're thinking about what the copy is in in those emails. I, I couldn't agree with anything you said more. I mean, it's I, I run my own podcast. We get pitched a lot, um, and in, and in fact, I mean, even the email that I sent to you was, uh, you know, kind of about this topic. And I was like, "Do you think this would be a good fit?" And I think the point of asking that the question in that way is that it gives you an out that says it's okay for you to say no. And I and I think that it's a very important when you're sending these types of emails. You are asking kind of a favor, but at the same time, you want to give them an out in in such a way that allows them and gives them permission to say, no, it's not a good fit or no, I'm not interested because your, your purpose is not to get a yes. Your purpose is to get a response. doesn't matter whether it's yes or no. It's that's the response is what's important, not the outcome. And it's a very, very subtle difference, I think. Yep. And, and, and so for, for me, we do a lot of outreach to get guests onto our show. And so my kind of classic close for a lot of those whenever I'm reaching out to a CMO asking them to be a guest on our show, you know, I'll, I'll say, Hey, you know, found your profile on LinkedIn. I think you'd be a great guest for our show, you know, up for it, question mark, or any interest, question mark. But there's no question as to how this person should answer. It's, it's a yes or no. It's not, uh, it's not let me know if you're interested. It's you're, you're trying to evoke some response, just like you said, Mike, either yes or no is either one is fine. You just want something from them. So I, I, I could go on and on for days. About, I, could, I could too, actually. <laughs> so we've talked about how to do this for testimonials, developing content for case studies. Uh, and then we've talked about influence outreach, setting up podcast tours. Another one is uh, link building. Talk to us about how folks can use this kind of email strategy uh, to build links. Yeah, so there's a lot of different tools out there that will analyze what the links are on your website and what the content looks like versus what related content out on the uh, the internet is. And you can essentially see, like, let's say you're searching for a, a particular key term and you're trying to uh, build an SEO strategy around that for some of your pages. And uh, you come out with this new article. It's kind of got some, you know, white hat SEO done around it. And you want people to link to it. But at the same time, you also want those links to be organic enough so that Google's not going to penalize you for, um, you know, like there's lots of gray hat or black hat strategies out there to essentially, you know, falsify their their results to some extent. And if they catch you, they will they essentially ban you. Um, and you don't want that to happen. But at the same time, you want your links to build. And the, the best way to do that is to go out to people and let them know, hey, there's this article here that you might not have known about. 
So if there are influencers out there, you can use uh, a strategy to, to follow up with them and say, hey, you know, we wrote this article over here. What do you think about it? Um, and I think that that's one direction to go. But I, the, the one that I actually like is to involve them before you've published them publish those articles and say, hey, we're building this article on this. What do you think of it? Could we get a quote from you? And if you're using those influencers to help build the article, they are much more likely to help promote it as well. Because again, you email them and you're asking them a favor. But if you involve them in advance, then it's a much easier afterwards to go ask them. I mean, any any podcast that, or any guests that you've probably had on your podcast, you could probably go to them and say, hey, we just published this podcast episode with you in it. And they're way more likely to promote that. Yep, exactly. I, I've been doing a similar thing with articles that I've been writing uh, for Huffington Post. And so I'll feature 15 different marketing executives in one article. Well, now I, I know that 15 people that have, you know, relatively decent reach because of their stature within their organization, they're, they're all incentivized to share the article that I just wrote because they're in it. And so I, I love that strategy. Mike, this is, this has been fantastic. Uh, there, there are a ton more of these that, uh, can, we could talk about, but I don't want to, I don't want to continue going on forever because this thing could be literally a, a four hour episode, I think. Um, but if there's somebody, maybe they want to dig in more with you, Mike, on, on some of these different ways that, that they can leverage one to one email, uh, what's the best way for, for listeners to, you know, stay connected to you? And then if they want to learn how, how Blue Tick can, can kind of help them automate this for them, how can they stay connected with Blue Tick as well? So there's, I'd say a couple of ways to kind of stay in touch with me personally. The uh, the two that I would say point people to probably first are uh, either Twitter or to my blog. Uh, if you go to Twitter, I'm under um, the handle single founder. And then I also have singlefounder.com where you can sign up for my, my newsletter. If there, you want to learn more about Blue Tick and how it can help with uh, those one-to-one follow-ups and helping with that warm lead process, then you can go over to bluetick.io and there's uh, some information there. But uh, again, I think that it's not about the tool. Um, it's really about the process behind it. And that's why even in most of this conversation, I didn't talk about, oh, Blue Kid say it can do this or that it can do that. It's about making sure that you're plugging this process into the right places in your funnel and then making sure that it works for you. And as I said at the very beginning of the episode, I recommend people start with a spreadsheet and you know a list of email addresses and the emails that they want to send and make sure that it works. Make sure that that's an appropriate place to do that because sometimes it's not. Um, the tools make it easier, but that's only one piece of the whole puzzle. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense to do that or sometimes there's other tools you're already using that are going to be just as good. Yep. I, I totally agree. If you don't have the strategy right, uh, th- there's not a tool in the world that's going to that's gonna fix a broken strategy. So making sure that you've got that outlined uh, before you before you ever implement uh, a specific tool is, uh, is, is super smart. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. Mike, this has been, uh, this has been incredible. Uh, really appreciate your time today uh, and uh, looking forward to sharing this with, uh, with our listeners. Absolutely. Thanks a lot for having me. To ensure that you never miss an episode of the B2B Growth Show, subscribe to the show on iTunes or your favorite podcast player. This guarantees that every episode will get delivered directly to your device. If you or someone you know would be an incredible guest for the B2B Growth Show, email me at jonathan at sweetfishmedia.com and let us know. We love connecting with B2B executives and we love sharing their wisdom and perspective with our audience. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.